Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. It's great to have your company for Having the podcast. Having a chat about aircon. There was one girl that was complaining that she got sent home from work because her nipples were erect. And did you get me that present, by the way? What? <laughs> that was a segue. <laughs> no, she's busy on the phone. What present? Um, Ash, our producer, said, did you want one? They're back in stock. Um, and talking about the Kim Kardashian nipple bra because we thought it was a joke in a skims range. Yeah, okay. So um, did she was going to buy me his present. Anyway, so then, yeah, she, he got, she got sent home because it was distracting to staff and she's like, uh, excuse me, why don't you look at the air con then? Mm. It's chilly. Mm. Did any of the guys say the air con's the reason why I haven't? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Send me home. I dare you. <laughs> guys, guys, this aircon's freezing. I think Too I have to small. Go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Why? did you buy one, Ash? Did you buy one of the nipple bras? She's still on the phone, isn't she? Yeah, she's busy. Yeah. Um, can you, that, that's a huge HR issue. Oh, uh, yeah. For that? Can Mate, you do I that? I clicked on the story and I read it, but it's got no details. Mm. So, so, it's so it didn't say where she worked or anything. Say red tube. What? What? No, it oh. didn't say where she Sorry. worked or anything. <laughs> no, I th- <laughs> I'm thinking something else. Sorry, no. <laughs> You're thinking a lot of things right Red now. Shoe, that's where she worked. Right? Yeah, right. Well, uh, then shouldn't be a drama, should it? No. Oh, yeah. sure. Let me find out more details for you guys. I just didn't think you'd be. If it was a glass interested. company, I can understand the danger. Nah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hooters. She worked at Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Women always say that offices are cold, though, don't they? Oh my god, always freezing. <laughs> Mm. I just type in nip- nipples air con. That didn't work. <laughs> uh, Are you still on Red Tube? <laughs> <laughs> What's Red Tube? It's Sweet Summer Child, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> do, 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 nipples do, do. staff member sent home air con. Do you reckon that will come up? Um, whatever it is, I'd like to watch it. Okay. There you go. Daily Star. Uh, Is that over in the UK? Yeah, I think so. Boss sent me home as my hard nipples through top were distracting male colleagues. Mm. The the woman, oh my God, I'm so dyslexic. I was going to say the woman, 72 years of age, but it was 27. (laughs) I was left speechless after, what, they can't have nipples and still show them through and distract the staff? Is that what you're thinking? Well, they'd have to look down. I'm just saying, who, who I was picturing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It just changed, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. The story actually, went from Mavis, a bit exciting. Do you know <laughs> you what? I, I should have actually changed it and go, the 27-year-old male was sent home because they were distracting to their female colleagues. No, a 27-year-old was sent, uh, left speechless after a manager asked her to leave the office because her hard nipples were distracting her male colleagues. But she's saying it wasn't her fault. It was the air conditioning fault. Mm. The 27-year-old anonymous woman was gobsmacked. I don't know. I think it's just made up, really. She said the air conditioning setting at her office had been freezing for a month before she put in a work order to have the temperature raised. Mm. While the engineer, she's an engineer, brought a jumper into work um, to deal with the cold. She no longer needed the extra layer, but in recent weeks, the aircon had been lowered again. Mm. There you go. Mm -mm. No details. Do you reckon it's made up? Jerry, can you just make up something to do with, I don't know, like uh, uh, nipples, male boss, colleagues? On sure, it. no worries. On it. <laughs> How old should I make the lady? Just 72. Yeah, done, right on. <laughs> do you mind 72? changing it around so it's 27? It's, it's not getting the clicks. <laughs> let's just change that number and watch it go. Uh, all right, guys, let's get into it. Here's today's podcast. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. In 1995, a 23-year-old mum went missing, leaving behind two little boys. Her name was Tammy Lisa Dyson. Police suspect she became entangled in Brisbane's underworld. To have a loved one go missing and have no answers would be soul-destroying. You don't, you don't have that closure. Mm. You can't grieve, even though you're looking at this, you go, I, the chances of someone being alive is, is minimal mm. that you would expect, but you just don't have those answers. And, uh, it's hard not to hold on to hope, that, yeah. that little piece. That you? little piece. Well, I think in this situation, her two sons presume that she has um, been deceased because they go, she wouldn't have not come back to see us mm. and I can understand mm. that and it did break my heart seeing, seeing two and I say little boys because that's how I imagine them in all the photos um, but they did a press conference just asking for any information about their mum. We were only little boys when our mum disappeared and we have, we have wondered what happened to her for all our lives. 
Uh, we're appealing for anyone who knows what happened to mum to please come forward and help our, our family. So that's Giles and Rainey. So they were just three and one when their mum went missing in 1995, which was 29 years ago. Mm-hmm. So she, uh, as though you're hearing from the police, she did fall into an adult um, scene as an adult entertainer. She moved up from, I think, New South Wales when she was about 17 with her sister and they started working at strip clubs in Fortitude Valley. Mm. The police presumed that she got in with the wrong crowd. She did check herself into a rehab facility in Corumban and then someone checked her out of that. And when they went to go and sign that they were checking her out, the lady said that, I'm her sister. Now, she does only have one sister, and that sister was like 100% it wasn't me. Mm. So no wow. one knows who this person is, and they're just appealing and saying, hey, if you were fearful of your life back then, mm. you might be in your 50s now. All of that may be in the past, yep. and they're offering up a $500,000 reward for someone who knows information. Right. So there's got to be someone, doesn't there? Mm. There's got to be someone. It's always someone that knows what happened. And a big thing of this is technology is so different than to what it is now yep. that the, you know, people went missing without a trace in those days. You'd have CCTV footage of who was checking someone out. Yeah. You would have that, you know, computer recognition where they might be able to hook it up with other details. You yeah. know, you've got DNA ta- DNA testing that wasn't mm, that wasn't big in the nineties. Wasn't, wasn't doable. Um, mm. Now Giles, her son. Uh, is going to join us next yeah. uh, to speak about this. Very brave of him to come in. I, this must be a very hard thing to speak about. Yeah. Really hard. So, I mean, she she went by a couple of names. She, well, she went by Tammy Lisa Dyson was her birth name. Yeah. Apparently she changed her name in the months before she disappeared to Tamela, Tamela Lisa Menzies. Mm. And the pe- police has actually pulled out there as well and said, look, she did have a stage name of Pebbles, and the reason that they want to say that is there might have been someone that only knew her as that. Oh, yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, Giles, her son, uh, is in the studio, and he is going to tell uh, his story next here at B105. In 1995, a 23-year-old mum went missing, leaving behind two little boys. Her name was Tammy Lisa Dyson. Police suspect she became entangled in Brisbane's underworld. We're talking about a cold case that the police have opened. They're offering a half a million dollar reward for anyone with information. A 23-year-old mother of two went missing back in the 90s and her children are trying to find out what happened. Her son, Giles, joins us now. Morning. Good morning. Now, the press conference you were doing were with the police because they have offered a $500,000 reward for information about what happened to your mum back when. How old was she and what year did she go missing? Uh, she was 23 and she went missing, uh, last seen in Corumban area on 1995, 28 years ago or something like that. And so how old were you and your brother when she went away? I was three and my brother, Rainey, was one. Right. Do you have any memory of your mum? Yeah, I've got a few memories, like, playing with my mum and stuff when I was little. Yeah. Um, obviously I was three, but Rainey... I, yeah, Rainey does. I've talked to Rainey. He doesn't. He's only one, so yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone can remember. Sure. I'm pretty. I think I do pretty well to remember when I was three. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. And looking at all the photos, and you just go. One thing that broke my heart. You're like she was never be out at our weddings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a girlfriend now, and stuff like I don't know stuff like that. You think like in the future and stuff, and it's pretty sad. Like I'm not gonna mm. be able to share any of that. And my nan's getting older as well, which sucks. So then when I lose my nan, I'm not gonna have anyone. Your nan raised you? Yeah. 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 Which is, yeah, my mum's mum. Yeah. So to take us back, your mum did change her name, um, but uh, when you knew her, it was Tammy Lisa Dyson? Yeah. And the police were were quite open, and you guys were quite open with saying that she had a bit of a history and she doesn't, don't know whether she fell in with the wrong crowd and whether they are responsible for her going missing. Yeah, obviously she was hanging around, got trapped in the wrong crowd, I think, but... Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's happened. Happened, yeah. Yeah. They were telling the story that she did used to work at some adult places down on the Gold Coast and I think up here Mm. in Brisbane as well. Um, She did go to a a rehab facility in Corumban and is that when she was... Yeah, her sister, um, they took her there and then she was there for four days or something like that and then a female picked her up 
oh, when she left to let herself go, I can't claim to be her sister, but my auntie, she, she's passed away now, but my auntie stated it wasn't her that picked her up at all. So the police have no idea who this person is? No. And that was, yeah, that'd be good if that person could, at least we could come, come forward so they can t- talk to that person just to see who picked her up, yeah. at least to gather more information. Because I guess we're talking, you know, years ago in the sense that now there'd be so many different cameras. Yeah. <laughs> there'd be so much, I guess, a little bit more security to find out who that person was. Yeah, that, yeah. It's crazy when I think of it because I just think, how can that happen? Yeah. But I've got to, like, snap back and think it was different times because yeah, yeah. yeah. mobile phones and stuff weren't yeah. even around then. So yeah. people operated different and, yeah, it was just... Yeah, it's just a different time, so it's hard to sort of put yourself back into that when I wasn't even, like I was three when that yeah. time, so I can't even really know what that time was like. Because the police were saying that maybe people that might have been scared for their lives or there might have been something going on that we don't, we don't know about, that so much time has passed that those people might not be fearful anymore. Mm. Things in their life might have changed and they're able to come forward and give you guys some sort of information about what happened to her. Yeah, definitely. And that, but there would have to be someone that would know something more like if someone can't just disappear. So someone has to know. Someone's picked her up, obviously, so that's one person that knows something more than what they are, the police don't know already. So just any information regarding who was talking to her or hanging around with her that time like would be any information's handy and is there any part of you that thinks that she might still be alive no 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 so you just want close you just want to know what happened yeah Mm. yeah your nan would know more about this but does she feel like they didn't try as hard to find her because she was an adult entertainer obviously had been to rehab and, and got caught up with drugs and things like that did the police not pursue it as if they would somebody else? Uh, I I don't know. I was just probably different times back then, I think. Mm-hmm. Things probably didn't get... Yeah, they, they didn't have access to the media and stuff like mm. they do now. It's just probably just... Yeah, I don't, don't really know what to say to that. You tell me how old she would have been if she was still alive now. 53. If this happened today, mm. it would be in the news for months and months on end and it wouldn't go anywhere. It would Until be on Facebook it, yeah. and it would be everywhere. I feel like... Your poor mum, unlucky that technology wasn't where it was because it would have happened so much quicker. Mm. And I feel for you, man, no one could understand what it must be like for you for all of these years. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah, obviously of media and stuff. But back then, I doubt it would be a cold case. I yeah. think it would have yeah. been solved a lot of, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's obviously been very difficult growing up without a mum. Um, I mean, I mean, it seems like your your nan's done an amazing job considering the circumstances. Yeah, my nan's done a really good job, and it's also been handy. I guess, having a little brother, like we've mm. been pretty much best friends growing up, so yeah. we've had each other to sort of bounce off. So the names that I was saying before, they're saying Tammy Lisa Dyson, or she may have changed her name uh, to Tamela Tamela Le- Tamela Lisa Menzies. Mm. So if you've ever heard any of those names or if there's anything that you sort of go, I remember this, then they're really calling on people to come forward. Um, before we let you go, Charles, I guess if someone's listening to this and they're going, I have some answers in particular for you, what would you say to them? Just to come forward with any information. Like, um, yeah, me and my brother and my nan, it'd be nice for us to know what's happened. Like it was our mum at the end of the day. I'm mm. sure if they had something happen to one of their family members, they'd be in the same position wanting to know answers. So any information to come forward and at least so we can sort of work out what's happened. Good on you, buddy. We appreciate you coming in and speaking about it. We know it must be really tough. Yeah, thanks for having me. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Welcome to Abby's Book Club. For men, yeah, books. (laughs) This is an interesting book club. I still haven't got wine and cheese yet, but it's Mm. when I bring a book to the table. And this one's really quite interesting. My friend sent this to me when I first got married, which is Don't for Wives. And it's a funny little book and it's written, you kind of go, oh, in old English. The thing is, it was printed in 1913 as not a joke. There was a lady that did exist. There's not much known about her except for the fact that she was a proud housewife. Her name was Blanche. Oh. And she wrote uh, The Don'ts for Wives, Don'ts for Husbands, and Don'ts for Raising Children. Mm. How and many do's? It's all very negative. 
No, it's not really any do's, isn't mm. it? Well, I guess it's in it's in the book as well. But she starts the the you know the preface by saying, "My dear sir, you're neither as bad nor as good a fellow as you imagine yourself to be. No doubt you'll be you know a good deal about women, women. But if you are in the early years of married life, not nearly as much as you will know in another decade. Mm-hmm. In any case, I hope that when you read my little book, you will thank me for having told you many things that otherwise you would have only learnt by experience and caused in another bitter way. Uh huh. So there's a few different aspects of it. So this is the don'ts for husbands. Don'ts for husbands, right? Mm. Does much of this stand up today as it did back in 1913? Can I read it and you tell me? Okay. Um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> this is Household Matters, and there's a few different chapters in it, but this is from page 39, okay? 39 mm-hmm. for Household Matters. Don'ts for Husbands, as written by Blanche, a female, in 1913. And it's just a snapshot of history mm. of what it was like back then. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been here, for starters. No, because you weren't born. No, I meant like <laughs> I wouldn't have been in the workplace. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. I'd be in the kitchen. I don't know. Jeez, I wouldn't have survived, would I? I wouldn't have been a very good housewife. You're a great housewife. Uh, mm. Don't interfere with your wife's household management. Nothing Done. upsets servants more than interference in matters of detail from the master of the house. Oh, Going to go and call your wife a servant? See how that one goes down? Don't forget to be the master in your own house, but see that your wife is mistress. Don't sneer at your wife's cooking or bridge playing, or singing, or in fact, at anything else she does. If you do, this may raise an an, an, an animosity that you cannot easily live down. Mm. There you go. That's some very confusing advice. Mm. Because it says, treat her like... A servant. No, yeah, like she's a servant, get her to do that, but then treat her like the uh, other woman. Mm. Yeah, how's this one? This one's good for mother-in-law. Don't make up your mind about your mother-in-law difficulty. If you take her the right way, you'll probably find that your mother-in-law, not only a charming woman, but one of your best friends. Don't demur over the servants. (laughs) Unwilling service is never good, and a kind word or a pleasant smile will do wonders in the way of saving your wife from being harassed. I think what they're saying there is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the message. on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Do you want to go to hobbies? Yeah. What, they, what sort of hobbies did they have back then? Well, this is a bit of a, I reckon this is, she's before her time by mm. suggesting they do a hobby together. Oh, okay. And what's the hobby? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. Don't spend all your money on the garden because that is Shut your up, hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and leave none for the house if that happens to be your wife's hobby. Don't omit to have a hobby of some kind. It will take you out of your wife's way when she's busy or you are cross and you will feel a, a different man for half an hour. Hobbies only go for half an hour. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, don't separate your pursuits from your wife's more than it is necessary. Do your gardening together. Uh. When's the last time you guys mowed the lawn together? <laughs> never. Never. My, my wife does quite often say, I'm going to weed the garden and never does it. Yeah. She always tells me she's going to. I think to. That, that means, she just goes and seriously, weeds can garden. you please weed the garden? Ah. I've looked at it. It needs to be done. Uh. Yeah. Work, talk and plan together and you'll become true comrades every year. Don't say a married woman doesn't want to go back to school because your wife wishes to attend language classes or lectures or even take up lessons in singing or dancing. Don't give up cricket or football or tennis or rowing or whatever outdoor sport busy. you have been accustomed to just because you're married. Athletics will keep you from becoming flabby. Flabby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, if you can get all the exercise you need in a game, which your wife can share, so much better. Well, there you go. Go and play cricket or tennis together. Probably more tennis. Can't see uh, any woman wanting to... Play test match cricket with them. Oh, my friend loves days. cricket. It's really? so, yeah, oh God, mm. she goes on and on about it. She goes, Are you watching the cricket? And I was like, No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do All you want right. to borrow it for the weekend? Uh, no, I think I'll Stab, you can learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Go home and it. <laughs> <laughs> The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. There's a few sorts of mothers' groups. It's a mothers' group that you signed up with when you all went to hospital and you're all sort of forced mm. together and you don't really like each yeah, other. I was very blessed. I like mine, but we don't mm. catch up as much as we want. But when we catch up, it's a bit. <laughs> huh. Just the way the disclaimer. No one likes each other, but not me.
Uh-huh. Well, no, I know that your wife went. She went once and was like, nah, never again. No, no, she went a, a few times. Oh, did she? And then we stayed friends with them. Yeah. Oh, okay, whoops, okay. We well, would person. go to those gatherings where all the girls would get together and mm. then we'd have to chat to the husbands. because. Was that those. like a force? Like, how did they all meet? They were friends before? That one, they, they uh, hooked them up at the hospital. hospital yeah. Mm. Uh, but we're not a wild group when we catch up because we still take the kids. And then you've got the other's mother's group where you're like, I've never met your children before. Mm-hmm. Because we just like to have fun. Mm. What has gone wrong on a mother's weekend away? Because <laughs> this is a long lunch that is themed up as the mother's meeting edition. Mm. So we're just going to get together, talk about our children, <laughs> um, share photos yep, of the sure. children. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, talk about, I guess. Parenting tips. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, cleaning hacks. Because <laughs> mums need to clean. Some do. Uh, register b105.com.au if you want to come along. But what is the what's gone wrong with your mother's group? Because I we went away to the Gold Coast uh, only once with my big group of friends. Not everyone made the plane home. Oh, mm. we couldn't find a couple of them. You lost them. Yeah, and you know what? I look back now, and if that had happened, we would be like, "Well, we can't leave. We need to find them." Mm. But it's we always were, an interesting one, isn't it? But we were like, "Nah." She, well, she the goes, cost, miss, you think of she the goes cost. missing all the time. If it's only two of them, mm. that's only two f- flights. Mm. If there's six of you, what, what, do you know everyone? where they were? <laughs> she was icing her nether regions because mm-hmm. she decided to get a tattoo. Oh. Got a tattoo down there. It was kind of like just to the side. Right. What kind of tattoo? Like, I, didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, I thought she might have told you. Mm. No, so she was up late at that and then she sort of slept in. Right. Which, no, she didn't really want to talk about it. She's like, my husband's angry at me. I sent a photo. He didn't, oh, yeah. what did I do? Oh. Mm. No regrets. Has any of your wives got up to trouble with the mother's group then? No. What Not. stays on the group? Yeah, well, I, you don't Weekend. tell me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Esther always brings home a random. Oh, yeah. yeah. For some reason. It's not a random. It's a new friend. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's when, good news. It's like 3 a.m. No, you never think that. 3 a.m. Mm. And you hear... Male, female? Women. Okay. You mm-hmm. hear this like group come into the house. And you're like, that sounds like more people than she left with. Mm. So you lay there and you wait. And the next thing, there's some random Tracy in my bedroom. Awesome. Uh, who I'm being introduced Matt, to. this is Tracy. She's, She's the like, best. She's so good. And She's we are going to be best I'm like, Where do you live? Mm-hmm. Oh, the opposite side of town. Yeah. Well, just stay with us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to get some snacks. I'm like, why is she here? She called an Uber with us. Where does she live? North Lakes. Why <laughs> is she in Oxley then? <laughs> Can you give her a lift home tomorrow? That is 100% no that happened. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. 301060, <laughs> what have you got up to from a mother's group? I just want to see how, what's wow. our level here? Because the last long weekend was amazing, but we were stuck on an island. Mm. I wouldn't say stuck, it was a beautiful island, mm. but we weren't able to go out. You had limited access to entertainment. Mm. Well, you have to call a an end to the evening mm. at a certain time. Mm. On the Gold Coast... <laughs> it just rolls on 24-7. Yeah. And you're at a casino. Yeah, so it is literally 24-7. Yeah. Mm. Um, I always is love it, those... Is it 24-7? Yeah. Yeah, huh? I think mm. they're shut down. Um, but it's a lunch. Yeah, it's not a bender. It's a lunch. Of course, though. of course, of course, it is. Yeah. Uh, I think it happens a lot too. Things get out of hand when uh, you get to go out for the first time after having yes. your baby. Because you know you just go back to you just you've get had all that so time excited. Off yes, yeah. and if you've given up breastfeeding or mm. even if you have, you're sort of like, oh, I'm going to express and I'm going to party just as hard, and you just can't mm. handle it. Yeah, because you just get exhausted. The key in <laughs> Zilmir. What's happened on your mum's night out? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. My friends are going to kill me for sharing this story. But um, we were at one of our annual bottomless brunches, um, and they clearly never end well. So we finished our package. We thought, let's move on to the next bar. Which I've Um, never liked that. They call them bottomless, (laughs) but then they end at some point. It should should end when we want it to. I think they should say it is bottomless until your behaviour is out of control. Mm. Yes. Then we put the bottom back on. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so we're in the city. We're at, um, you said, you know, the Mecca bar. Yeah. Mm. And um, we've got, okay, so we're going to go to the next place. We've walked out. We're at, like, the main intersection. We're standing at a red light. 
And my friends decided, oh, no, like, she's really full. She needs to express. And I'm being, a, you know, the great friend and a mum I already am. I'm like, I'll help you. So she's pulled the boob out, and I've just seen the milk go everywhere, and I've gone, this is too much. So I'm now vomiting in a garden. Oh, yeah. So my friends, and, like, there's cars at the red light watching this happen. Is it what? She's like a sprinkler. Like, you're, well, like, yeah, spraying, really you're spraying full. it straight out. Like, she, she had an eight-week-old baby. So oh, like okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's spraying everywhere. Another friend is like helping her get it out. I have a friend holding my hair while I'm vomiting in the garden and it's just absolute chaos. We've got two other friends just laughing at us and I just, I can't imagine what these four people in their cars at the red light were wondering what was going on. I can hardly so believe ask, <laughs> Nikita, if this is a bottomless brunch, what time yep. was this? Um. Well, I think this was like, Two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it yeah. Started. Which is it's yeah. just yeah. It's the daylight is so disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyone film it? Mm-hmm. Anyone catch it on camera? No, no. no. I think we were all just so caught up in the chaos mm. <laughs> of what mm. was going on. But you know, we partied on. We yeah, went course. through it, moved on to the next place, mm-hmm. and it's just a funny story now. Mm. <laughs> You should register, b105.com.au. Yes, mm. yes, I was thinking about that. Yeah. It's on the 9th. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, uh, let's go to Shannon now, 131060, when the mums went out. The mums went wild. Mm. Shannon, what story have you got? Um, I actually came along to your mum's gone wild <laughs> party a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Yes. So this is our fault. No. With my sister-in-law, and we had a big, big night, and we had so much fun. And I don't usually party at all, mm. so um, it was really great. That. It was a good night. Yeah. yeah. No, it was so fun. But um, the next morning was my son's fifth birthday party, so <laughs> I don't know whose idea that was, but <laughs> it was awful. I'm guessing yours. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister-in-law and I just had to suffer through the party, and you know, keep our sunnies down and. Just keep shooting looks at each other like, why? Why? Can, can I actually happen? ask you girls about this? Mm. Okay. What yeah. is with Booking women things the next day? Knowing that they're yeah. having a big no, night. No, you know yeah. there's a party and you still put the because most annoying thing on mm. at 9am the next because day. Because we think we're going to be okay. Because we're like, you know what? We're going to have fun. But we will be okay. We're going to have fun within reason. And then you go there, you have a few drinks and you're like, what? is great and then you get carried away and you're like it doesn't matter babe it doesn't matter babe we are going to be totally fine mm. do you know what i mean? we'll drink water before it's yeah. all good and then you wake up and you're like oh my god but you pun- it's like you because we're pre- busy we've got pre- stuff on punish yourselves mm. yeah like i got a lot on the next day after the mums the party was booked well in yeah. advance i yeah. must say yeah. like yeah. Mm. and it was but just a surprise that it happened to be your son's fifth yeah birthday. who, who would have seen <laughs> that coming yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what have and you got I, on and the then day i got after? covid like and then i, yeah. I must have Picked up COVID from the valley, I think. Mm. Like, yeah, it's not your fault. Um, <laughs> there's heaps of mum stuff on, so we've got to be at school for yeah. the my son's mum's event. Well, that's inconvenient. Uh, yeah, yeah, I asked him to move days, but apparently it's around Mother's Day. Oh, God, they're sticklers for the rules, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. The teachers had to deal with me. This is her third time having a child of mine in her class. So every, every time you had a pregnancy announcement, were they like, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's still there. Sucker. Uh, good on you, Shannon. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Now, as many people are aware, today uh, is the day before Anzac Day. Yes. So we all have the day off tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people will be getting up, going to dawn services and being a part of that, which uh, I think is an amazing thing to do. People get the opportunity to go and do that. Uh, but I was very lucky to walk the Kokoda Trail a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. I got back. Um, it's really weird because people have been asking me about it. And they're like, when did you get back? And I was like, last week. They're like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, and I can honestly say that it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life that, that I've ever done. Um, my expectation of it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Well, you thought it was going to be tough, but you didn't think the spiritual yeah. part of it yeah. would affect you? Uh, I mean, I guess it's the history, I should say. Yeah. And that's the part that I think makes that so amazing. And I would highly recommend any person who has thought about wanting to do it um, or is going to say, I'm going to do it one day, absolutely do it. Like, do it when you can. Mm. Take up the opportunity. Um, 
And what kind of blew me away as well is just how close Papua New Guinea is to Australia. Mm -hmm. We know it's there. It's a three-hour flight from Brisbane. Well, you've got to remember the history of it is why they went over there. That was Australian territory. Mm -hmm. And that's... Back then, it wasn't called Papua New Guinea. Correct. It was Australian territory that they were defending. And the whole um, understanding was that they were the last defence before they'd get to Australia. And that's the story with it. You know, um, they're very proud of their independence that you learn over there. Apparently, their independence day in Papua New Guinea is just like a wild... Party, mm. they they go crazy. Um, and as we walked the Kokoda track, we did it from Kokoda back towards Port Moresby. Because it's downhill. No, <laughs> no, that's the actual track that they took, right. defending it. Because and they took it because it was a direct route. Is that why? Like it was the quickest way to get past the island? Is, no, so because it wasn't at the hardest. But well, the the track has always been there, and it is actually it's like a highway to the villages mm. throughout there. So as you walk through it, you actually pass villages and stay in villages along the way. Yeah. So um, Kokoda also has an airstrip. So if you could get Kokoda. And whole Kokoda, you had the possibility right. to bring in supplies. Mm. Right. So whoever had that, and that was there, that air strip was there in the nineteen forties, right? Yeah. yeah. And the one that you land in on when you go to do the walk is the same airstrip wow. that right. was there. And so that's why Kokoda was so important. And the Japanese were coming from the other side, mm. and they yeah. wanted to get that because if you get that, you can bring in your supplies, refuel. So it was kind of like a race to that. get there. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. You know, and the the Aussies that went over there and fought, they were never meant to leave Australian shores. Mm. Uh, they called them chocos because the, I guess, the real army, the non-reserves, said that they mm. would melt under the pressure. Oh. Um, and so, were they still in training? Is that what happened? They were still in training. All the other soldiers were overseas, so it was like, oh gosh, let's send them in. Yeah, so they were all overseas fighting, and then this sort of occurred, wow. and they had to send them over. They were never. Meant to, they were never legally allowed to go and fight outside of Australia, so they had to change legislation to let those soldiers go over there and fight in the jungle. Yeah. Now, they had all their um, camo that was coloured ready for uh, battle in the desert. So when they're standing in a green jungle, wow. they were like a beacon. Mm. Um, and when you do the walk, they explain the history to you all along the way. And I think the Prime Minister, he's there, and I, I might have this fact wrong, I mm. think that Brigade Hill is where he is walking to, yeah. to um, have sort of a ceremony and, and everything uh, tomorrow on Anzac Day. Is that what you see towards the end when people get a photo when they've completed the walk? No, no. Brigade Hill's about halfway through. Right. So is that the top? Because you always see the photo when people complete it and they take a photo under the arches. No, well, well, that is the end, but yeah. it's not the highest point. Right. Right. Mount Bellamy is the highest point, and it's funny because when you're walking it, they're like, today we're going to the highest point of the whole track. Mm. You're like, wow, it's Mount Bellamy. And then you finally get to the top, and you envision this big, wide opening, and you can see everything, but mm. you're still just in the centre of the jungle. Right. <laughs> you're like, so wow. get out your compass so wow. that you can see that you're the highest. <laughs> really, yeah, it's really interesting. Still the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we we actually, um, as you walk along, they have these sort of setups. Um, they have memorials, and then they have big cages that have all the stuff that they've been finding on the track. So yeah. there's, like, rows of shells and mm. guns mm. and things. And we had, obviously, porters that were with us um, who were all pretty much descendants of the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, and you hear the stories of them. And they were local villagers um, who used to carry out wounded men on their shoulders. And a lot of people lost their lives, they did as well. A hundred percent. Yeah, to take them to safety. And, you know, you hear the stories of they literally would carry them on their shoulders on stretchers Mm. and then hold banana leaves over the faces of these men to stop the light from getting into their eyes Mm. and and stuff like that. And um, one of the villages we went to actually had the last remaining Fuzzy Wuzzy Angel you used to be able to go there and you could meet him and speak mm. with him, but he's passed away a few years ago and there's like a, a big shrine there to him mm. that you can go and see. Um, so after you do a bit of a ceremony um, at Brigade Hill, it's really quite moving. Mm. You have a big walk that day after that, and I could not help after hearing stories and things but just picture my 22-year-old son mm. being sent over there and... Imagine going to bed every single night, right? Mm. And I mean, it would never leave your mind, but laying in bed and wondering, where is my child? Mm. Are they alive? Are they okay? How are they feeling? You know? Every time the phone rings, you'll be like... Exactly. Mm. I used to send telegrams back Mm. in the day. I know that my... um, When my great-grandfather was missing in action, they sent a telegram saying Mm. that he's missing 
and then they didn't have contact for another year and a half. Wow. Mm. Within that time. Mm. Like, do you have a funeral? Do you have some sort of... And they, they don't know. No but one isn't that, isn't that bizarre to think now that someone's just missing or how delayed that information would come mm. through? Yeah, it takes yeah. a while. And it, it's given me such... I always respected Anzac Day and I've always respected, I think, what... Uh, well, you would have had a lot of grandparents that would have fought in the war. Yeah, but I haven't heard any of their stories really. No, but you, you really know? should now. Like, if you look into it, because it would be amazing, because you, you definitely do. Of course, yeah. of course. But you, when you do something like this and you walk in their footsteps, you have such an, a better appreciation yeah. to be... Like, it was hard, right? Mm. And we, we struggled. People got foot rot. People got really sick. And you trained. And they, we trained. They, yeah, do you know what I mean? Trained. Like, all of a sudden, you're on mm. plane. You haven't yeah. trained. You haven't got the medical facilities. You don't go over with a doctor mm. like you did. It was, would have been. shooting at you. Yeah. And no one's shooting. Mm. And, and you actually walk past these foxholes in the ground where you know they were sitting with guns. Mm. And they would point out to you. And as you, you, you'd stand there, and they would go, okay, so you see 40 meters that way, there was a Japanese sniper there. Mm. And you realize how much danger they were in. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly read this. Um, this is one of the poems that we read during the um, ceremony. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it shows you what the PNG locals did uh, for us. And it's called The Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels. Many a mother in Australia, when a busy day is done, sends a prayer to the Almighty for the keeping of her son, asking that an angel guide him and bring him safely back. Now we see those prayers are answered on the Owen Stanley track. For they haven't any halos, any holes slashed in the ears, and their faces worked by tattoos and scratch pines on their hair. Bringing back the wounded, just as steady as a hearse, using leaves to keep the rain off as gentle as a nurse. Slow and careful in bad places on the awful mountain track, and the look upon their faces makes us think that Christ was black. Not a move to hurt the carry as they treat him like a saint. It's a picture worth recording that an artist's yet to paint. Many a lad will see his mother and the husbands hug their wives just because the fuzzy wuzzy carry them to save their lives. From mortar and machine gun fire or a chance surprise attack to safely, uh, to safety and the care of doctors at the bottom of the track. May the mothers in Australia, when they offer up a prayer, mention those impromptu angels with the fuzzy wuzzy hair. <laughs> and that got me good, man. Someone <laughs> read that out and I just, lost my, I just everyone started crying. But um, it's an amazing experience. And to anyone who has served in the army, um, we pay, well, I personally and all of us do here, pay our greatest respects for what you've given up. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Anzac Day tomorrow where we remember our fallen soldiers and also get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win. Uh, and of course that means being that it is on a Thursday, you can expect a lot, probably I would say around what, 80% of the workforce to pull a Swifty on the Friday and just uh, breeze into a four-day weekend. Mm. And we were encouraged here at work. Not mm. us. but Not us, no. Every, it came through from us. HR, mm. yeah, to have a day off. Mm. Why do they always encourage you to have days off? Because is it good for... I don't know. Some budgeting payroll? thing. Yeah. yeah, if it brings down your liabilities because as a Because your liability is that you owe people annual leave. Correct. So if someone quits, you've got to yeah. pay them the cash. So if people use up their annual leave when they quit... Them. So why are they not <laughs> yeah. pushing him to take long service leave? They That's are. a lot. <laughs> Holding on. <laughs> you are, but this is what you're doing. Volunteer yeah, yeah. time. It's yeah, also good, for I think, uh, um, for morale to say to people, here, take four days off and refresh yourself. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I uh, my other time is spent busily watching with close eyes AI and when it's going to take over the uh, entire world uh, to the point where I thank my Siri whenever it does something for me because then when they uprise, I'll go, he was polite, don't kill him. Well, if Siri's popular, you don't know. You reckon it'd be a lower rung... Maybe, you know. It can't hurt, though. Yeah, no, it can't. It can't. can't. And then even better, they'd be like, he was really polite to even one of our lower level employees, you know. He's nice to the janitor, so (laughs) let's not hook him into the machine. Uh, But sometimes AI can be good. And uh, this one, uh, Uber has created an excuse generator with AI um, to get you out of the Friday public holiday. Um, So you can put uh, put in some information. You put in your name, your position at work, 
your boss's name and how much your boss likes you out of 10. <laughs> what would have you put? How, well, how much do you reckon your boss I, likes well, you out of I took 10. the time to do it for everyone. Oh, us. okay. Uh, oh, and, and so, so, okay, so the rating is what you think our boss likes each of us out of 10. Yes. yes. Oh, I love this. Yes. Great. I bet you're um, high. So, and, of course, I had to put in your uh, your position at work as well. So for oh. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, I put in um, button pusher. Yeah, uh, and Jack uh, liked you. It's a scale of one to ten. One being the highest, ten being the, uh, one being the lowest, ten being the highest. What would you think I put you at? Oh, Zero. I, just... I put. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, and then you, uh, it brings up a response. So you will be having Friday off, right? Because, yeah. and you've already sent this email to Jack. Dear Jack, I hope this email finds you well. On April twenty sixth, I need a day off to recover from an alien abduction experience. Those extraterrestrial beings really know how to throw your schedule off. I would have called, but after the abduction, my phone mysteriously vanished along with my socks, leaving me with no choice but to email. I look forward to hearing your approval. Until the next episode of Workplace Shenanigans, Matt, the best button pusher you've got. <laughs> Why does it matter if he hates him? Do you know, like, where did that come into Yeah, it? I don't know. I didn't change the tone for any of them. Okay, uh, right. Because you're, you were next. I mean, my real question is, mm. why did I lose my phone and my socks? How did the... No, I think you it's only had aliens. your... aliens. Yeah. 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 That's weird. Yeah. I wonder what else they did to you, though. Might be a good long weekend. For <laughs> fingers crossed. Well, well, maybe not. Well, no, no, yeah. No, <laughs> probably, probably wouldn't cross it. Uh, so you, Abby, yeah. um, I put in that uh, he liked you. I sort of wanted to do a sliding scale. So yeah. how, how much do you think Jack likes you? Fearful or like? Which one did you put? Negative put, six? Well, it only had like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, five, I put okay, five. Okay, but you just... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> That's my position. Um, what did you make up for this one? No, your actual position. <laughs> okay. Staff morale officer. Yep, yeah. good one. Okay. It is on your email thing. It is. Yeah. Has been happy I blame years myself. Yeah. Uh, dear Jack, I hope this email finds you well. On the t- April 26th, I need to request annual leave for a family reunion with distant relatives I've never heard of. Apparently, I'm the long lost cousin they've been searching for. Congratulations. That's nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, the family's phone lines seem to be as convoluted as, as our family tree, so I thought it best to send this request via email. I look forward to hearing your approval. Best regards, Abby, the best staff morale man- manager you've got. That's good. Yeah. That's nice of me. Spending time with family, as you should. And Zach. <laughs> Day? Mine's quite exciting, and I think Vinny will like it. So, um, how much you he likes you ten? You would have written, <laughs> and and out of curiosity, mm. what did you put yourself down as when it comes to your position? CEO. Here? <laughs> well, I was. This was the first one I did, so I wasn't feeling that footloose and fancy free. Yeah. So I just put broadcaster. Oh, I'm a okay. broadcaster. Yeah, I'm a broadcaster. Yeah. And you whatever because I put like comedian. I'm a broadcaster. Or, you know, I'm broadcaster. Funniest guy in the universe. <laughs> you <laughs> hey, put I comedian spat that back out at me. <laughs> CEO of shits and gigs. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a new one. <laughs> I'm a little bit more um, maybe arts. Ah, he he. There's here's where the difference is in the likes because your guys were all a bit formal with the dear Jack. And but you're like, like, hey, yeah, I'm like, what's up, bruh? What's up, Jack? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this email finds you well. On April 26th, I've been accepted into an exclusive ninja training camp and must request annual leave to perfect my stealth techniques. The shadows await my mastery. I would have called, but ninjas prefer silent communication modes, hence the email. I look forward to hearing your approval. Your loyal minion and resident office clown, Stav, the best broadcaster you've got. So we all get a day off. You're welcome. We don't. We'll see you on Friday, guys. Yeah. None th- of these are going to get improved. Might not see me, I think, I think they might. No, that's what I always laugh about. What? Maybe every country has ninjas. It's yes. just the ones that are bad, you see. It's true. I dress too brightly to be a ninja, to be fair. <laughs> Undercover ninja. <laughs> I wear yellow. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Brisbane, these are your confessions. Stav, Abby and Matt's confessions. Brisbane, these are your confessions. We want to remind you that the confession line has been open for some time mm. and is still open. So if you've got anything to confess, remain anonymous. But the number is 3837 1234. That's 3837 1234. It's hard to surprise us these days. Yeah, well, we but have. we want to be like, <gasps> oh. oh my God. Because mm, we've had some stonkers. And there's a little bit of an exen- incenti- ex- incentive. It's good for you. Yeah, it's good for the soul. <laughs> it is. It's good for your soul. Mm-hmm. It's good for your mental health. Have you ever been to confession, confession? Uh, yeah, I got kicked out. You got kicked, what, too long? Uh, no, well, we went to a Catholic school. Mm. So it was always like, girls, girls, no, this is not, no, no, out, out. <laughs> and you'd be like, okay, no worries. 
What, the priest kicked you out or one of the nuns came in and no, said? No, the, the priest used to always, they used to be like, come on, no, no, this is this is serious time. What, did you go uh, in it like together, like the bathroom? No, you just like, you wait up and they'd have the little thing and you'd be like, oh. I didn't do my homework, how many Hail Mary should I get? And they're like, no, come on guys, <laughs> move on. <laughs> did you ever used to go at school? No. At a Catholic school? No, we never had the confession in there. Oh. No. Yeah. My friends used to call me pagan. Why? Because I was actually... Um, I is an Anglican. Mm. You're right. a official, official woman. <laughs> <laughs> so they used to be like, you can't take communion. Yeah. Uh, so remember too, you can confess other people's stories. That's true. You know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be yours. If, oh, if well then I do friend. have some. <laughs> if, I, if I got a well, friend that I... opened up the... I got a friend that I've worked with <laughs> for some time. Yeah, who? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do it, 38371234 is the number, guys. Send them through. Uh, here we go. Here are some of the greatest confessions we've received so far. I have five children. My oldest daughter, her father isn't who she thinks is her father. Um, she's about to have a child of her own. Uh, this is a 22-year-old secret that only I know about. Um, it's getting pretty hairy at this point. <gasps> mm, tough one. That's... Because then it gets into all the medical stuff, doesn't it? Well, I just get scared about... Ancestry.com and all the DNA that you can do now, because even if that daughter doesn't do it, if the grandchildren do it mm. or something along those lines, and like you said, medical, mm. then they're going to find out and go be like, why didn't you tell me? I feel like Ancestry.com should be like a psychic when they find out bad stuff. Not they just don't you. tell you. They just tell you the good bits. <laughs> well, like they don't know. Celebrities they, are related they to. Yeah. And then illegitimate fathers and stuff. Yeah. Just give it to yourself. Tell you what really took uh, Maury Povich out of the equation, didn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's taken over for him. Yeah. You are not the father, but right. your great-great-grandfather fought in World War II. Yeah. You were great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goody. Uh, three eight three seven one two three four Brisbane. It is open 24 hours, so if you have a couple of wines, Tonight, mm-hmm. feel free to ring. Are you asking for group confessions? Oh no, I'm just saying if you uh, if you once you lick it up, mm-hmm. often the truth comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's another one. Hi, um, this is so silly. I call myself the Tuna Can Bandit of Brisbane, so I have some serious road rage, and I have I have told some people about what I do, but. I, I know people are going to maybe recognise who it is, but when someone really, you know, grinds my gears whilst driving or they cut me off or do something bad, I follow them. Like, I will follow them. And I'm I'm in a beauty industry and I will, if I'm running late, I'll call my patient and say, I'm so sorry, I'm stuck in traffic. But... I'm really not. I'm actually just tailgating someone and I open up, like I keep tuna cans in my console of my car just to throw them at people's cars. And it's the, is it the serene oil chili tuna? And I open the can up and I throw it at them. Um, Yeah, that's my dirty little secret. So just don't ever cut me off. Thanks. I love that she's also got her favourite brand of tuna yeah. that she throws at well, people. Well, I think she's saying it's the oil that seems to stick on it. Because yeah. otherwise the can would just sort of mm. go off. I we mean, actually, salt water would do nothing for it. You know, when it's true. in the spring water yeah. one. Mm. <laughs> we actually had someone when we first played that confession, mm. had uh, someone ring up and say that they had been canned mm. by that woman <laughs> before. Yeah, it was the weirdest one. I think it was very, very bizarre. Yeah. very. It's, it's like... She's done it once by act, like she yeah. just had the thing there, but got it's such a rush from doing it. So it. now all of her cup holders are full of tuna cans. I would like to hear from her now, though, because that was a while ago. And with Cosy Lives the way they are, I reckon she might have downgraded to like spam. spam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and uh, here's another one. Three eight three seven one two three four. We want you to blow our minds with your confessions, Brisbane. I have been having an affair for, with a married man for over four years, who has two kids already and married, obviously. And it is that serious that he now wants a kid with me. We ended up speaking to her. She was like, "No, I'd sort of, I was done. Mm. I don't want any more." Mm. But then she said. We're not trying, but we're not not trying. Mm. So, and then she got hit with a tuna can. <laughs> 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 there we go. We want to hear in Brisbane. What are your confessions? Three eight three seven 
one, two, three, four. You will remain completely anonymous. We can change your voice. It is all there. Call the answering machine now. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Zeus, yes, my one-year-old boy. I love it when people are like, why would you get another boy? I'm like, this might surprise you. I prefer having males in the house. <laughs> Uh, so we got a male dog because mm. I don't know. I just didn't want a female. No and bitches allowed. <laughs> mm. I am the only bitch queen. allowed. Yeah, that's what I normally say. Sorry, queen. Uh, no, that's what they call me behind my back. But uh, yesterday I took him to go and get washed because we've got visitors staying over and I wanted him to be like cute and cuddly and smell good. So I booked in to get him dog groomed. Now, I know you don't have a dog, Manny, so you might not realise this, but trying to book them in for a groomer is like virtually impossible because they're always booked out. Right. I was like, how's that? I managed to get an appointment like the next day. Ooh. Took him in there and they looked and went, oh no, we're not expecting him. I was like, what? And they're like, we're expecting a Maltese. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> so I booked the wrong day. And I was like, damn it, booked the wrong month. Oh, All right. right. Well, thought, he, so he was too big for them, is what? Well, he wasn't saying? booked in, and they're like, no way, we can't deal with him. We can uh, only, we're only, we're expecting a small dog. You've actually booked in for May. Oh, right. So I was like, damn it. All right, no worries. But the thing is, Zeus just likes being touched for an hour. So he was so excited to go there. I know, right? Mm. Boys. And he was like, <laughs> and then he like literally sulked as if like when I had to leave and put him back in the car. <laughs> I was like, get I over didn't, yourself. I didn't get my massage. Yeah. I was mm. like, all right. So I was like. I'll do something nice and I'll take him to the dog park oh on the way home. <laughs> what? Because he's upset because he's disappointed that he didn't get he's his. He's my favourite child. Yeah. And plus. Don't he's pretend a... you wouldn't do exactly the same thing. I don't even get mine groomed. Mate, you guys take your dog for like two walks a day. Mm. You, you treat your dog how better dare, than you do. How dare we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm, no, I'm walking. just saying I hadn't taken mm. him for a walk. Mm. So I took him to the dog park. And when you're at the dog park and it's like one o'clock, there's not many people there. So there's one other lady that always goes there and she's like, says hi, but I kind of avoid it because I'm like, I don't, I don't need any new friends. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm up to the limit. Your borders are full. Mm. She's really nice though. Oh God. So Zeus comes out of the car, getting over his little bit of a sulk. He runs into the gate and I open the gate and he runs up to this lady and pisses on her leg. <laughs> and I was like, mine. Are you for real? Wow. And I ran over. I was like, oh, my God. I am so sorry. She and like brown leggings on or something? Yeah. She thinks she was a tree. No, she had a dress on. I have to say thanks for having a dress on because at least then you could wash it off. And I was just so embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God. So sorry. He's never done that before. And her reaction, can mm. I just say, was just brilliant. She was like, eh. And you know what she said to me? And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really get that. She's like, do you know what, love? Don't worry about it. I've had two ex-husbands that peed everywhere. And I was like, um, okay. So you used to that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know oh, if like that was. On, on her? Well, I, don't, that's, I think she was just trying to be nice. But all I kept thinking, I was like, was that worth her, your she ex-husband? Was, she was trying that to make you feel better while making herself look weird. Yeah, she was. <laughs> But I think what she was meaning is she's used to gross males. I think right, that's the point okay. she was saying. But, yeah, of course, I was like, what do you so mean? tell me, to... like, can we break yeah, this down? Yeah. So the first <laughs> husband, uh, you were just surprised that you met a second one uh, who likes that? Or like, maybe what's the she deal? likes that. Maybe she looks No, she didn't like no, that. Didn't so like we got the hose and she was giggling and I'm squaring her down saying I'm so sorry. And I was like, so not another third husband? She's like, no, 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 not that silly, not going back again. And then we ended up talking. So she's really lovely. Ends up that our my son and her grandson are in the same footy team. Uh, right? Maybe maybe Zeus just thought you were lonely. Oh no, it's gross. Mm. I was like, I was like, you do that to me again, and I swear to God. <laughs> what did he thing? say? Is that a thing? I don't know. Do dogs start peeing on people? I've never seen a dog pee on a person. No, no, he's never done it before. There was an issue where he would drink out of the bowl and then pee in it for the others. <laughs> Well, he's just giving back what he takes. Yeah, isn't circle of life. Yeah. It's Matata. pretty gross. But I was just like, that's a nice response. She was trying to explain it, yeah. but all I kept thinking about was, so let me just say, like, was it a surprise yeah. when the second husband did it? Like, what was he, what was going through your mind? And then awkwardly, I hate when people drop things like that on you and then they move on with the conversation yeah. and you've got to somehow try and bring it back because you're, like, just dying to know. But I'm pretty sure she was just explaining uh, okay. I... Yeah, I had two males that I used to live with that were gross and used to wee on the seat. That's what I'm thinking, right? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll uh, ask her next week. Right. Yeah. The B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Alpha Box, we're going to play Friday because tomorrow's Anzac Day. Uh, here are three answers for you to get closer to winning $10,000. Your letter is H for Harry and some of your answers are Hawaii, Hexagon and Hairspray. 
Right ho. See you Friday. Bye. Bye. Stab Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show.